How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Tacoma Beast channel where as you guys know, it's all about the taco. Today we're in Baja Sur, California. We're gonna be hanging out with Scotty. He's gonna be showing us how he transformed his second gen Tacoma into a third gen. All right, Scotty, dude, thanks yes. for having us out here, man. Yeah, no um, worries. Huge fan of your truck, huge fan of what you've done with it. Uh, you're one of the few people that I know that actually uses a truck and sends it to the maximum. So guys, let me tell you this. Scotty, I reach out to him via Instagram, uh, direct message. I'm like, yo, I want to really do a build walker on your rig. And he's like, yeah, dude, come down to Pismo Beach whenever. I go down, say hi to him, really chill dude. He gets in his truck with like sandals, or I think you were with no sandals. <laughs> I was just barefoot. And we were just practicing around, waiting for him to, you know, go big. Everybody started saying, oh snap, this guy's gonna go Scotty big. I had no idea what that meant. I'm there and like sitting in the passenger seat and Scotty just, he sent it Scotty big. He just took the dune, flew. I remember just seeing the sky, everything was blue, just waiting to land. <laughs> and you feel the weight of the truck, like gravity is just pulling you down and when we landed my back cracked from the top of my head all the way to the tip of my ass dude I just felt it crack <laughs> that's it was not insane, a good thing dude <laughs> has that been the biggest jump you've ever done or have uh, you done that was the biggest jump no, I've ever freak, done no and freaking I, way dude it's crazy that that was the first time you've ever been in a pre-runner you that know? was my first time ever <laughs> being in a pre-runner driving that insane yes right yeah so <laughs> it was pretty crazy for you I'm sure riding passenger dude not gonna lie ever since that time I've been craving just coming back, like checking it out um, and started building my second gen to do something yeah. as crazy as that, you know? It's super addictive. Yeah. Like once you feel that, like that rush, it's just like, that's like, my life is dedicated to it now at this point, like, you know. You can't help it. Yeah, I spend so much time out here in the shop just getting the truck ready for the next time I can go drive. So this shop right here where we're at, where are we at exactly? Like. We're in Baja Sur, California, right? Correct, yeah. And what made you want to, you know, say bye to the States and come down here and set up your shop and, you know, live out here? I grew up coming down here with my family. My parents have always taken me down here since I was a baby, um, fishing at first. Like, we'd come down here, go fish. Uh, that was our vacation. And then uh, as I got older, teenage years, we started surfing and then we just it came it was surf trips and we would go all over the peninsula just searching for waves and then you know that's kind of what i grew up doing and that was always where i had the most fun you know it's, i mean you're on vacation so you're gonna have the most fun but that so that was that ended up being the goal is to move down here cool man yeah and then it took a while like after i got married it was on hold because my wife wasn't on board at first i mean most people aren't you know that's not so, the so you way. told her like hey i, I, I want to go live down yeah that, that, yeah when we were dating that was like one of the things that came up uh, like i, well, I that's told pretty her cool that you told her that like, yeah and she freaked out like she started crying almost because she's like i don't want to move to mexico <laughs> But I mean, it's a big move. Oh, yeah. No, like I said, nobody even thinks of doing anything like that. Yeah. But like for me, it was just natural. Like that's where I had enjoyed myself the most. So why not live there? And then she just over the years, like working so much and like in California, you're just working to live pretty much, you know, all your money goes to paying bills and you're spending no time together. It's not like for us, it wasn't a very happy life. So we ended up deciding to try it down here a couple of years ago. and. We, we love it. Dude, that's awesome, man. I'm happy for you for that. And I know that the first time we went out with you, you told me you had that. Dream. Yeah, that was, that was you part of the plan. You wanted that was to the set plan. up your shop. Yeah. You wanted to like come out here and just have a chill life. And dude, cheers to that, man. You're doing it. That's Thanks, really dude. Cool. Yeah. So let's talk about your truck. Um, what year is it? I know that it's, <laughs> it's a Tacoma, but not really. <laughs> right. Do you have a name for that's it? That's the shit talking, right? It's not really a Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> I consider it a taco, man. It's still got the taco. It's got the cab. <laughs> it's got the interior. No, I actually bought the truck brand new um, in Vent from Ventura Toyota in 2007. Yeah, I drove it off the lot. And it was, How old were you? I was like 23. 23 years old? <laughs> yeah. Brand my new first, taco. My first new car. I had a pre-runner, a Chevy Silverado that I'd just blown the motor up in. And I just started dating my wife. Uh -huh. And I was like, I need something reliable. I'm mature now. Something I can take her out on dates yeah, on. And... Yeah. Nice, clean, brand new car. And Hell yeah. <laughs> so I went and 
picked up a brand new Tacoma. And then when did you start doing things to it? Because I know you weld everything on it, right? Yeah, I built the whole thing myself. I couldn't afford to do it any other way. It's Dude, just that's badass. I mean, yeah, it's cool. I, I, I wish I could afford to just drop it off at a shop and, you know, have it taken care of because that would be more fun because it's so much of my life is spent out here. <laughs> but, but it's cool to know how to do everything for sure and like being able to take care of it, maintain it. And did you already have previous experience welding and stuff like that that gave you that confidence to like do yeah. to, to what you did? Yeah, no, definitely. I like this before this I had built in a few Ford Rangers like growing up through high school and stuff like going out to the desert. That was always the pre-runner truck. You know, I was a Ford Ranger. And then I had the Chevy Silverado for a while that was a full build pre-runner too. Um, I blew the motor twice and then, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, well, I was still young and yeah. driving like an idiot. So. And you kept having that adrenaline <laughs> to just keep pushing it Yeah, yeah, Dude. always, always. And then, so I got this, this was supposed to be the reliable, I'm never going to touch this thing, it's just my daily driver. Of course, that's what it always How long did it took before you, you started modifying Six it? months. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. No way! <laughs> So what, what was the first thing you did to it? So of course, like the first thing, oh, I'm just gonna get wheels for it. Okay, yeah, um, that's, but it. Wheels, that's where it all starts. Yeah, wheels, a little bit bigger tires, and then, you know, replacement coilover, upper A-arm. And then like after that, I actually, the next thing I did was I caged it. Cause- Oh, you went, oh, dude, you went all out. <laughs> yeah. So I had it just with the upper A-arm. And, the, and what was the suspension in the back? Um, it was just stock. I, I put a, a big king shock on the back with yeah. the stock leaf spring. Yeah. It helped a little bit, but yeah. like everybody knows, the spring over doesn't work very well, so yeah. <laughs> it was a little and harsh. And I mean, now that you, you have this, you're like, dude, going back. Yeah, it's, yeah. There's no way. It was a slow progression since 2007 to this, so that's a, it took a while. Dude, that's awesome. And what, what suspension system is it ra rocking right now? So the front's Ford Bronco um, frame. It's actually cut off. The frame of the Tacoma was cut off at the firewall. No way. Yeah. <laughs> so, Holy snap. Yeah. And then I welded on Ford Bronco with I beams uh, TTB suspension. But it, so it's, the, I think the year was a 1990 Ford Bronco. Yeah. Um, I bought one off of Craigslist that the guy had pulled the motor out of for some project. And I just, so I cut the frame off of that. Yeah. And then I welded it together pretty much. Um, <laughs> Dude, that's, that's a huge project. How long did that take you? That, the front suspension, the, um, all said and done, was seven months um, after work, you know, just working on it as much as I could. Holy snap. And this was like after work, whenever you had the chance? Yeah, just in my garage. Just um, at the time we were living in Lake Elsinore, um, just so I had a garage, so that was nice because most of the truck's been built outside. Okay. Yeah, so it was nice to have a shop for that. And um, yeah, it was just... Um, figuring out all the stuff because nobody had ever done anything like that before. When I started the build, I got the idea because I was at a short course race and I saw there was a truck there that had the TTB suspension on it. It was a Chevy um, body and I was like, oh, that's working really well. And for four wheel drive, I know the A-arms always have issues with the center cross member hitting. So that was, I was trying to get around that. And so I tried this setup and it's, it's been insane. It's worked really well. Dude, it looks insane. And it looks, <laughs> it looks insane when it just <laughs> goes like that. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's funny because I've never, i I've never done anything for looks. Like it's always just been, I mean, obviously I've put a lot of time into making the truck look nice, but like the main goal is always to be able to send it. And well, like, like I was telling you, like yeah. this build is one that not only does it perform the way it's supposed to, but it's extremely clean at the same time. And you don't see that that often either. You see some beast yeah that just can send it and take on it everything right but it doesn't look so good or one that looks really really good but doesn't perform as good you have for the sure. perfect combination thank you yeah no i appreciate it yeah for sure that that's what i'm going for so awesome yeah. well you nailed it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like to be able to wax my truck still Dude, it's so clean. <laughs> i want it to, I want, <laughs> want it to be clean <laughs> let's talk about the back suspension and how did you even build that? There's no manual for it. Like you said, like there's yeah, nobody was doing it. How did you back. take on the back? It's pretty similar to the front. The frame was cut off right, at, right after the cab. Um, so there's just nothing back there and it was a... Uh, so you shrank the wheelbase? Yeah, so um, I cut the frame. So it's just a blank canvas. And then I 
shrank the wheelbase seven inches, so the truck's seven inches shorter. The reason for that is I like the way it handles better. It, it turns a little bit quicker. It's, a, it's more twitchy, which isn't good for super high speed, but if for like what I'm doing is donuts and drifting and hooning. Yeah, <laughs> it works a little bit better, yeah. You can kind of snap it into a corner a little bit better. Dude, that's, it just makes me want to just, like, let's go right now. So how much travel do you think you have up in the front? Or do you have up in the front? Uh, yeah, the front travel is probably around 17 to 18 inches. It's the same as like a, a long travel um, race, like I guess they call it race kit, yeah. with retaining four wheel drive with A-arms for a Tacoma. But again, the, the whole issue that I was having was not so much the travel, it was just the bottoming out on the cross members. So, yeah, so that's, that's the way I figured out how to fix it. And then what about the travel in the back? The back is roughly around two feet. I've never measured it, because to me it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know that it works for you and that's, it, that's yeah, all Yeah, it works for what I want it to do, exactly. So, Perfect, dude. Yeah, it's around two feet and um, yeah, a coil over bypass. I don't run bumps in the back. I just run the stock bumps, the tough stock Tacoma bumps, because I have a, a big bump zone in the bypass, so I just tune it into the bypass. Oh, cool. Yeah. Has there ever been a time where you sent it and you were like, you had that oh shit moment? Like, uh, and then you saved it? Sending it? No. I don't get to, well, actually when the truck still was leaf sprung, um, it had spring under kit and then it had a long travel kit in the front. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was giving my buddy's girlfriend a ride uh -huh. and we went, we, we were jumping over this little road crossing. Um, it was looking back at it now it was a really small jump, but it, it kicked the ass in super high. It bottomed out and it sent it, uh, made the airbags go off. No. And which wasn't a big deal for me cause I'm pretty mellow and I don't really care about anything, but the, the, my friend that was riding passenger, she had been in a car crash recently and the, oh, so she was, she was freaking out cause the airbags went off and then I felt really bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I gotta chill out. Dude. Yeah. Damn. That's pretty cool though, that that's only been your, your the one close call. I mean, and there's been many other close calls, but it's always... I'm happy you did not have any of those with me. Especially yeah. with the way you were like, sending it. Yeah. Um, the truck's pretty stable now, the way it's set up. And most of the close calls have been with Lee Springs. Because the, the ass end of the truck wants to buck a lot more. I feel that on mine a lot. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it would be if we were trying to pre-run a race course and then we hit some funky whoop section or G out and it would just make the ass in buck high. And that always scares me. I, I hate staring at the ground and you have no control. Oh man, that must be stuff. <laughs> yeah. Be so that, that always thing. is like, that's, that's when I'm like, oh shit. And, but yeah. You save it. Yeah, I mean, I've been really lucky a lot of times. <laughs> Dude, I mean, the whole time when you were driving, I was like, how does this guy calculate? Because you, dude, you drive like this, like you were chilling, like, <laughs> I remember you had no shoes on, just, we're, we're reaching this jump, I'm like, yo, are you gonna hold your steering wheel? And you'd like, I think you did. <laughs> and then the truck would just, Boom, land perfectly. It was nuts seeing that. It's, it's well, nuts yeah, how that works. It's, and that's almost, yeah, it's almost like going on a roller coaster. Yes. You, you have like no control at some point. Except the 100% of the control is in your hands and not mine. Well, but. yeah, for you, there's zero control. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just watching the GPS on how fast I'm going when we go off of the lip. And I want to make sure I'm not going too fast or we're going to kill ourselves. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then just hope for the best. For the I was landing. like right on the limit, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know that that day was like, it was shocking, dude. And then in the back, you sort of have like a storage. <laughs> yeah, so the whole, yeah, when I did the back, at the time, the trunks for the pre-runners were just, they were getting popular. So I, I really liked the way a couple other guys had done it. And it makes total sense to have all that storage in the back of the truck, easy to access. I always thought of building these trucks, it's like, it's a way to express yourself almost. Yes. Yeah, so. And I tell that to people, it's, it's your art, yeah. right? Everyone's is gonna be different. Exactly. And, uh, like there's going to be haters out there that are going to judge the way you did things and why you did it that way. Right. Dude, don't even bother like listening to that, right? You right. have to enjoy what you built. It's your creation, right? And you, my man, have created <laughs> one nice truck. You're saying like I, the shortening the wheelbase too gives it that look. I, it's just like everything, in, it, it has to look good to me when I'm building it. And if I don't like it, then it's not, not how I'm going to build it. So. Yeah. 
that is there anything that you've done where you were like mm, you yeah. had to step back I mean, the, like the roll cage I built, I mean, it's already been over 10 years since I built the roll cage in there and I've learned a lot since then. Um, I'd like, I'm going to end up redoing that at oh, some really? point. Yeah, I'll cut that one out and redo it. But um, everything on the truck is, is constantly being upgraded and modified or maintained or something, you know, it's never ending. So yeah, it's a never ending game. Yeah. Especially when you go out, you always come back, something broke or you got to do maintenance on it. Yeah. How is that like? To drive at this level, when you're pushing the truck to its absolute limit, it's constant. The, when I come back to the shop after I go drive, the truck has to get pretty torn apart every time. There's, I know I have a list of all the stuff I have to check that's automatic, um, you know, wheel bearings, that kind of stuff. The front suspension cracks a lot, so that all, that's constantly being welded. Oh, no way. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, when we did that massive jump, yeah, did so anything break? Because <laughs> I told you, I was like, hey, can we do that again? Because we did not catch the landing. I remember we didn't. Yeah, yeah. So and you were like, nope. I was like, that's when yeah. I knew you would send it. That's when I knew that. I was like, Dude, yeah, that yeah. was a big one. That one was big uh, when we did that. Yeah, I wish I could have done it multiple times, but sometimes those jumps are so big, it's so hard on the truck yeah. that you just, you can't do it. Um, I actually, the front suspension got bent to the point where the four wheel drive wasn't working the axle was binding so to fix you never told me this like i left i was like hey scotty thanks bye <laughs> well yeah but it's not a big deal for me that's just normal oh, okay, <laughs> you know okay. like it's constant it's just constantly fixing stuff but yeah so i had to cut up the the front suspension and fix it all but it's and now it's all good yeah yeah question what yes. tire size are these are these 37s these are 37s yes they look they look huge and they're beadlocks right no, these are not bead locks. Oh, they're not bead locks. No, they're just normal the street locks. The and what's the lowest PSI you go on them? Uh, when we're running in the dunes and stuff, like last time we were in Pismo, um, I normally run eight in the front. Eight? Yeah, and then the back, um, it'd be like 10 or 12. That's low, dude. Like overland rigs, when we go out, we, I think the maximum we do is like 18, 16 maybe, mostly 20 from what I've seen. It's different because those those rigs are so heavy. With all that weight, you can't air down as much. Yeah, you're just trying to get the tire to be wider, so you yeah, have all that weight on. Yeah, you have that weight on top of it already. It's already wider. So, and do you find yourself popping the bead a lot since you don't have the bead locks? Yeah, if I air down that low when I'm in the dunes, I'll I usually blow a bead every time I go to the dunes. <laughs> I remember last time yeah. when you did that, I was like, holy! Snap. But you you just got back, you know you got out. Psh, Right out, kept going. I yeah, like, it ain't that, that was fast, man. You were, you were your own pit man. Right. It's, <laughs> it's normal, you know? <laughs> it's just, it's part of it, so. Now, I know that because the whole truck is four linked, you had to remove the gas tank, right? Because it was in the way. Correct. What fuel cell did you go with? And so, tell me a little bit about that process. Um, yeah, the fuel cell is a Jazz fuel cell, uh, 32 gallon. Okay. It's right behind the cab. So it, it fits perfect there and then it allows me, a lot of trucks have it in the very back, uh -huh. but since mine's behind the cab, I can have the trunk and all the storage in the back so it's easier to access the stuff, tools and everything back there. But. Cool. Yeah. Now, the moment that I know a lot of people have been waiting for that have been following you. Yeah. I heard you did something new underneath the hood. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done, man? The motor is an LQ4, so it's a LS based, uh, LS2 based motor. It's just completely stock right now. Dude, I can't wait to hear this thing. <laughs> it's funny because, to be completely honest, it's like 50% is just the sound when I'm driving it. it makes me so happy now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can imagine every time you turn it on, it's just like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's something that I've been wanting to, like, put an LS1 or an LS2 in my second yeah. gen. Yeah. Yeah. There's been people out there that are like, you know, put a 2JZ on it or... Yeah, which would be awesome. And I had people telling me the same thing when I started this swap. I like the LS because there were so many aftermarket parts available. It just seemed easy to get parts. The swap was super easy um, and just more straightforward. If you're, if you're running turbos, um, forced induction stuff, it gets so... You're putting heat into the motor and it's just not as reliable. So I just... It wasn't interesting. The way I see it, apart from it being a little bit easier, is you get a reliable truck. 
Correct. reliable Japanese truck and you put the heart of America into it, <laughs> right? Where you turn it on and it just roars. Yeah, that's Dude, for sure. <laughs> you know, and I'm a huge taco fan. So like right. having a taco with a V8, I mean, that should have just come out straight from the factory. Yeah, no, it definitely should have. I wish they would have put a 4.7 in. And it's a light truck, right? Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a mid-sized truck and you put a V8 on it, like, I can't wait to ride this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to ride yeah, it. Yeah, it's a good time for sure. <laughs> Dude, so recently, I know you took on a, a new project, right? You, this is a second gen, but as you guys can see, that's a third gen tail light. You converted the truck yeah. from a second gen to a third gen. Yeah. What did you have to do? What was the first thing you did? And sort of like, what parts did you have to buy to make that happen? Like I said, I bought the truck in 2007. And I haven't really changed how it looked for over 10 years. And I wanted to change it up. So I um, kind of started looking around and there's a few different options. It's like either a new, new Tundra conversion. Um, but I, I, didn't, I like to keep it more stock looking. Like I like the glass to be really mellow, not huge flares and stuff. So. I really like the McNeil um, the conversion for the second gen to the third gen because the front, it's only a three inch flare in the front. Okay. And then they had the bigger bed sides, which are six inch in the back to accommodate the, the width, you know, so the tires can actually tuck into the bed sides. So that, I started with that. And then being down here in Mexico, you have to source everything and it takes a little while. So, I mean, that it's been a process, but you've had to just go back up to Cali, pick up the stuff. Yeah. And come back down. Yeah. And then the headlights, the grill, everything. But as far as like interchanging the parts, it's just, just a simple bolt on, bolt it's, off. It's insanely easy. I was so impressed with the way they designed the fiberglass. No way, dude. Yeah. I keep hearing this. It yeah. It makes me want to do it on my, <laughs> you on should. my second gen, but you I should love do the it. second gen look, you know? <laughs> Since you, your truck is shorter wheelbase, right? I'm assuming you had to cut some of the bedside off in order to make yeah. it fit or? Yeah, so that the bedsides there, that wasn't super easy, but that's my truck. You know, that's not, it, like if I would have had a stock truck, they would have bolted on. But since the wheelbase is shorter, I have to cut seven inches out of the bedside to get the wheel well to be where it needs to be. And then um, tab it all up and and get it all to sit right. Cool. So for the back, if it, there was a guy that was like a stock Tacoma, you can just bolt off the bed sides, bolt them on, good to go. Tail lights, what about the wiring of the tail lights? The tail lights for the second gen, you would need the third gen pigtails out of the tail light. Okay. Um, so you could go to Toyota and buy those, maybe find them on eBay. I didn't have any luck when I looked. So what I did was, um, since I got these um, aftermarket ones from Tacoma Beast, then I just uh, hardwired them straight out of the light since they have their LED and they have wires coming out of them. Uh -huh. So I just hardwired it straight into the Tacoma wiring. And then for the front, same thing, bolt on, bolt off, same. remove the, the fenders. What about the hood? You have to switch out the hood, right? Yeah, the hood, the fenders, the grill, a couple of little trim pieces and then the, the headlights. But yeah, it all, if you, if you buy the kit from McNeil, they sell a bracket that makes it completely bolt on for the stock oh, truck. Way. Yeah. And then the headlights, I'm assuming you also have to Same mess thing. around with the wiring. Same thing with the headlights. Correct. Yeah. Um, you can either buy the pigtail, the stock pigtail out of the headlight, or you could, um, hardwire it like I did. So, Dude. and that's it. Voila. You have yeah. yourself a third gen taco down here in Mexico. A lot of body shops are actually doing the conversion on stock trucks. Mm -hmm. So they're buying like, especially single cabs because they don't make single cabs anymore. And oh, people no like way. me love single cabs. <laughs> so <laughs> I think like the more people start finding out about this, they're going to have trust issues. Like when they're buying a used third gen, they're going to be like, huh, <laughs> is that really a third gen? Right? Right. Yeah. The only way, like the cabs are very similar. They're slightly different. You can tell, um, the body line. Um, on the front of the door is like it's a more aggressive dip down by the front of the door on the third gen It's a little more mellow on the second gen, but that's the only real telltale sign But then other than that you're good. Yeah, but I've seen pre-runners that like the off-road swap meet and stuff and, and like third gen pre-runners and I walk I'm like is that a third gen or a second gen? I'm already checking. No, them. yeah, <laughs> you're like you're going underneath yeah. like... <laughs> That's crazy dude. What about the inside did you convert that at all or it stayed second gen? 
What, what upgrades? Oh, the interior? Yeah. yeah, the interior, I've always liked it to be just pretty much stock. I'm a simple guy. I like it simple. Cool. So <laughs> it's all. And, but you have like a five point hardness seat. I remember like the first time I ever got on, <laughs> I was so excited to just strap on. I was like, dude, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, it has race seats in it with five point harnesses, stock, stock dash, stock steering wheel. GPS, GPS, race radio, um, but it's all kind of hidden in stock compartments, so it's pretty mellow looking. Not like full race, I don't think, but I guess it does have a full cage, so it's kind of <laughs> kind of gives it away. You also have a new back bumper, right? Underneath the new t the tail light, I was trying to kind of make this look like the uh, third gen stock bumper. Yeah, it's actually an oil holder um, oh, here, no. and then I just uh, built off of that and you know, with, with just aluminum plate. And just kind of, I, like I said, I, I like the Trek to look as stock as possible, even though it's obviously not, but I want it to appear that way. So just trying to, like all those little details, just keeping it mellow. There was a comment that um, they said out, they were like, dude, why not just buy a third gen? And it's a comment that you really have to understand the build, the love that goes inside. I'll let you talk about it. Tell us why. <laughs> or, or, yeah. I want to hear you. Why, why is it not? Why would you not just buy a third gen? A third gen would be awesome, but to get a third gen to this level would take years, even if you took it to a shop and then the amount of money you'd have to put into it. I don't think you can buy a third gen with an LS motor in it. Last time I checked. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you can't. Somebody who said something like that would just, they wouldn't understand the amount of work that goes into building a truck. Yeah. So they, they um, have never had a truck that's fully, that's like, you can go drive. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, man. So Scotty, how, I mean, you got this truck when you were 23 years old. How old are you now? I'm 37 now. 37. How much money do you think has gone into the build and how much time since you bought it until now that you just devoted to the truck and... Is my wife gonna see this? <laughs> <laughs> we can, uh, is there a way to block her? <laughs> um, nah, I, to be honest, I didn't keep track mostly for that reason, but... <laughs> And I mean, it's been such a long time. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, crazy long. I don't and even there's, think I've I, there's no way I could afford it otherwise. Um, and, and doing everything myself again, like there's no other way I could do it to afford it. But um, I'd say somewhere around 60k with me doing everything myself. Wow, that's actually a really good price for like what you have built. Yeah, and all of it has been 100% you. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see what uh, we have in store here in Baja Sur. Yeah, me too. You down to go uh, shred a little? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go do it. Cheers, man. Cheers.